White Uhura tells Kirk that there's been a distress call from the starship constellation coming from a nearby solar system, which they discovered has been totally annihilated, as has almost every other planet in the sector. The crew has no idea what could be so powerful to cause so much destruction. They find the constellation floating adrift in space, almost completely disabled. A team beams over to the wrecked ship to investigate, where they discover the constellation's commanding officer, Commodore Matt Decker, in a distraught state. Apart from him, the ship has been completely abandoned. Decker says that a thing attacked the ship and that he beamed the crew to the planet below for safety. The planet that no longer exists. Don't you think I know that? There was, but not anymore. Spock has discovered that what attacked the constellation and killed Decker's crew is an automated weapon, which they nickname the Doomsday Machine, that is designed to destroy whole planets and digest the debris for fuel, potentially sustaining itself forever as long as it can find planets to eat. And its next destination is their very own home sector. The Enterprise crew and Decker are determined to stop the thing before it reaches their home and destroys everything they hold dear. The Enterprise tows the constellation behind them as they head back home, Decker beaming to the Enterprise with McCoy and Kirk and Scotty staying behind. Decker and McCoy are immediately greeted with the sight of the Doomsday Machine approaching their vessels. They're hit from behind, severing the tether between the two ships and separating them, the constellation set adrift and helpless. As they approach the Rigel system, the machine loses interest in the Enterprise in favor of those delicious and highly populated planets. Spock plans to go back for the constellation and then head straight for Starfleet Command to warn them of the threat, but Decker challenges his authority. Since a Commodore outranks a commander, he takes over command of the Enterprise and orders the crew to follow the machine so they can try to stop it from destroying the Rigelian colonies, despite the Enterprise being totally unprepared to combat the entity. You can't let him do this, Spock. Doctor, you are out of line. So are you. Sir. The Enterprise closes in on the machine, and as expected, their phasers don't even scratch its invulnerable surface. The machine begins to pull the Enterprise into its maw, which will surely destroy the ship. Decker refuses to try and break free, determined to destroy the thing. Spock questions Decker's capability to command due to his psychological distress, which is obviously driving his single-minded need for revenge. Decker relents, and the Enterprise, with some insistence from the Constellation, which has been working to get back online since the two ships were separated, is able to pull free. The Enterprise and the Constellation are able to establish ship-to-ship communications, and Kirk is outraged when he hears that Decker has taken over. I mean, you're the lunatic who's responsible for almost destroying my ship? Kirk orders Spock to relieve Decker, who goes very reluctantly. While being escorted to sickbay, Decker knocks out the security officer and steals a shuttlecraft, planning to fly it directly into the Doomsday Machine, since its hull is clearly impenetrable. He says that he is ready to die since he got his own crew killed. He ignores Kirk and Spock's plea for his return, and both he and the shuttlecraft are destroyed in the radiation of the beast's maw. The Enterprise crew discover that the shuttlecraft exploding inside the machine did some minor damage. Kirk gets the idea to fly the Constellation into the machine, and hopefully the explosion of a much larger vessel will be enough to stop it for good. He and Scotty set up a detonation device that will give the Enterprise 30 seconds to beam them off the ship before it's sucked in. Spock warns Jim that not only are they not sure his plan will even work, but that the Enterprise's transporter isn't working at 100% efficiency, and that they may not be able to beam Jim back in time. A chance I'll have to take Kirk out. The constellation looms closer and closer to the mouth of the Doomsday Machine. When the ship is close enough, Kirk sets the charge and tells the ship to beam him aboard. But the Enterprise's transporter shorts out at that exact moment. Time is running out as Scotty works frantically to get the transporter back online. Gentlemen, I suggest you beam me aboard. Ten. Nine. Eight. Mr. Scott. Fire now, Mr. Kyle. As the last seconds run down, the ship drifts into the Doomsday Machine's embrace. It explodes, causing the machine's inner workings to erupt, and the planet killer is an operative, no longer a threat. Miraculously, Kirk materializes on the teleporter pad of the Enterprise, safe and sound. After cleaning the sh out of his underwear, Kirk enters the bridge. Welcome aboard, Captain. As the ship plots a course for home and begins repairs on the warp core, Kirk says that he'll be reporting that Decker died in the line of duty. Spock wonders if the Doomsday Machine was the only one of its kind, or if there are any more out there like it. Kirk says he finds one more than sufficient. Fun fact, I've actually fought the Doomsday Machine in the Star Trek Online game, and it is a bitch of a boss to take down. Until I rewatched this episode for the review, I'd forgotten how good it is. 
Where some episodes seem to drag on and on, the Doomsday Machine feels like half its length, which I suppose is a testament to how the suspense draws you in. This episode is considered by a lot of Trekkies to be one of the best of the original series, and I have to concur. Which is amazing, since the entire episode was only shot in five days, rather than the usually scheduled six. Director Mark Daniels made a bet with the producers that he could finish the episode in only five days, which earned him a $500 bonus. That was a lot more money in 1967. The episode was also nominated for a Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation at the 1968 World Science Fiction Convention. If the music feels distinct in this episode, that's because it is. Composer Sol Kaplan created a totally original score for this story, which really offsets the intensity of the plot. Apparently, I'm not the only one who thinks this, but the music sounds very similar to the Jaws soundtrack. Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott. The writer of the episode, Norman Spinrad, had adopted the script from a manuscript for a sci-fi short story he hadn't been able to get published. He admitted to pulling some inspiration for the story from Moby Dick, with Decker as Captain Ahab and the machine as the white whale, though Decker suffered much worse at the hands of the machine than a lost leg. They say there's no devil, Jim, but there is a... Right out of hell, I saw it! This won't be the last time Star Trek draws from Moby Dick. The Doomsday Machine is an obvious parable about the Cold War. The weapon itself is an XB for the constant nuclear threat with which America and the USSR kept the dispute going for so long. Kirk even directly compares it to the H-bomb in the episode. It's easy to forget in the year 2022, but back in 1967, the US was still reeling from the threat of nuclear fallout. Both America and the Soviets knew that firing said nukes would be mutually assured destruction, and would probably take the rest of the world along with them. That was the gambit of the whole dispute. Neither side could strike without wiping themselves out, which led to a decades-long stalemate. This episode explores a reality where such a destructive force was deployed, and the end result is clear unremitting annihilation. The bloody history of the machine is unknown to the members of the Enterprise, but no doubt that it probably annihilated both the enemy it was created to fight and the planet that created it, along with many, many others. In such a war, there can be no winners. So yeah, a really solid episode. That's all for this video. If you'd like to see more from me, subscribe to this channel, consider signing up for my Patreon, and follow me on social media. See you next time!